Kelly Mason. I am a holistic nutritionist and I am on a mission to help women show up for their brightest lives. If you want to stop fighting that war against your body, if you want to show up for your wellness journey with peace and freedom, you are in the right place. Hit subscribe below and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I am so excited about today's video. I previously shared a healthy Trader Joe's haul where I shared with you all of my nutritionist approved go-tos. You guys loved that video and I figured it's time to flip the switch and check out some of your favorite items from Trader Joe's. So I put out a call on Instagram and here on YouTube and I just went to the store. I loaded up on a bunch of your favorites. Now look, I thought a lot about how I want to share my reviews with you guys. I believe really strongly that we should not demonize foods. When we internalize that, we often associate morality with our food choices and I just don't think that that's healthy. I believe life is meant to be enjoyed. We are meant to nourish our bodies with things that bring us joy. But obviously I believe in the power of food and the food choices that we make. And I believe that education is a really important piece of that empowerment. So what I'm gonna be doing is reviewing each of these items, telling you my thoughts on the ingredients. And we are gonna give all of these items one of three different labels. Instead of going with bad or good, we are gonna go with often, sometimes, and rarely. Often means the ingredients are nourishing, healthy, life-giving, metabolically supportive foods that will fill you with nourishment and make you feel great. That is something that I would likely buy on my regular grocery trips, purchase, to have in my home, and to eat on a pretty consistent basis. Rarely is going to cover foods that I personally probably would never actually purchase, although I did today for you guys, just for you guys. So I think of this like hey, if I show up to a wedding shower and they've got this food out and I love this food and it looks delicious and I want to enjoy it, I might enjoy it. I'm probably very rarely going to purchase it and it's definitely not going to come home with me in my home on a regular basis and then sometimes it's going to be somewhere in the middle. The ingredients are probably mostly pretty good, better than other options. It could be something that I do purchase to have in our home as a treat or a snack but Definitely not something that I would consume on a daily basis. My hope really is that these three categories help y'all process how I make food choices and shopping choices. I think it's gonna be good. All right, let's start right here with a beloved Trader Joe's cult classic. If you don't know, gnocchi is an Italian genius delicacy, beautiful fluffy crescents, typically of potato. If you've been living under a rock for the last four years you maybe have missed the fact that the whole world seems to think that we need to avoid carbs at all costs. And cauliflower transformed into nearly every possible carb and starch you can imagine. Now if we look at the ingredients on this, we've got cauliflower, cassava flour, potato starch, extra virgin olive oil, and sea salt. I like these ingredients. These are all things that I would have in my own kitchen that I would use to cook something from scratch. Definitely, definitely passes the ingredient check. Now, with that in mind, I feel like I have to give the important disclaimer I just think it's so important we realize we don't have to eat cauliflower everything <laughs> like you can have potatoes guys it is an item I have purchased before I've tried it in the air fryer it is great it is definitely gets like crispy it does taste a little bit like cauliflower it is not as good as potato gnocchi or the fact that this has only ingredients that I have in my kitchen I am gonna give this an often but if you want potato gnocchi, enjoy potato gnocchi. All right, next submission here. Actually, she put palak paneer, and for some reason, I didn't see that at my Trader Joe's. I just saw this paneer tikka masala. I figured I'd grab it and we could talk about this. I feel like one of the big reasons people love to shop at Trader Joe's is for the pre-packaged, prepared, serving size items like this, right? When I was in college, I lived off of stuff like this. I get it, it's easy, it's convenient, it's also delicious, it's packed with flavor. Now, on this ingredient check, just a very quick scan, my eyes are darting to a lot of things. <laughs> We've got citric acid and acetic acid, both of which are manufactured and artificial used for freshness. We see vitamin A and vitamin D3 added to the milk, which unfortunately is something that is very, very, very hard to get away from. Milk is loaded with vitamins, but when we pasteurize it, like we expect companies to do here in America, we strip it of the vitamins. So then we add the artificial manufactured version back in. It's not the same to our body as the 
a real thing. The biggest concern to me here though on this ingredient list is the canola oil. I'm guessing that's gonna be a theme of this video. One of the biggest concerns for me when I'm looking at food choices is processed oils. Although marketing has led you to believe that vegetable oils are good because they come from vegetables. Now with that said, the rest of the ingredients aren't so bad. I like seeing that we have real butter in here. For me personally, this is gonna be a rarely item. There is foods of nourishment and nutrition in here. So if you are relying on things like this to feed yourself, better than nothing. Your next item was these organic elote corn chip dippers. I'm not really sure what to expect with these. Are these like Fritos or are they more like tortilla chips? I think actually for the purpose of being able to give you my review on this, we gotta see. I didn't really plan to do taste testing here. Okay, they're like Fritos, but they've got spices on them. They've got like a little of that Mexican, it says, with Mexican style street corn flavored seasoning. Good news is it is organic. Almost every ingredient in here is listed as organic. That means fewer pesticides, so that's great. But unfortunately, after organic corn, the first ingredient is organic sunflower oil. And again, polyunsaturated fatty acids, processed vegetable oils, truly one of the main ingredients that I choose to keep out of my regular consumption. Everything else, all the spices are pretty decent. There is natural flavor. I've shared about this before if you watched my last Trader Joe's video. Natural flavor is honestly just code for whatever the heck they want it to be. It is very often manufactured artificial processed chemicals. It's kind of scary the amount of stuff that they can just cover under natural flavor. It doesn't always mean that it's bad, but it can be. Okay, wait, guys, guys. We might have a moment of trickery uncovering here. If you didn't know, on ingredients lists of packaged products, they have to list ingredients in order from highest to lowest of the quantity inside the food. So theoretically, organic corn is the biggest ingredient and then sunflower oil and then down. So that's why normally you see like the spices and things towards the end. Sometimes what they will do, especially you see this often with sugar, they will list multiple different kinds of sugar so that it's broken across four different sugar ingredients so that it's not the top ingredient, but it is. Now on this one, we've got organic corn and then organic sunflower oil. But if I keep looking through this, it's got organic sunflower oil again, which I'm really confused on. Why would it be on there twice? I have no idea if that is intentional trickery for that purpose of the fact being that it's actually the number one ingredient or not. Something to be aware of. So again, for the purpose of poofas, this is going to get a rarely rating, but I will say after trying this, I totally get the appeal. I can imagine it is delicious with guac or salsas. But to me, this is like an occasional party treat. All right, this next one, I am equally thrilled and so sad about because Darian submitted hash browns. Hey, man, every once in a while, Chick-fil-A breakfast, those hash browns dipped in a little Chick-fil-A sauce, that's a rarely food for sure. But it is a treat I love. For some reason, like six months ago, I just had this intense hankering for hash browns and I've seen people share about these on the internet. These patties, these pre-made patties, I've seen people say, pop them in the air fryer and they get like crispy and amazing. And you can slather some avocado and deliciousness on top. Unfortunately, unfortunately, ingredients, potatoes, vegetable oil. This is something you will often see where it will say oil and then it will say soybean and or canola oil because they just literally use whatever they can get the cheapest. Another thing I try to process when I'm thinking about these things is how much. Now you're not gonna see me counting nutrition facts, counting calories on all of these things. There's a reason I don't do that often, but sometimes I will use these things for reference. If you look at the nutrition facts, one potato patty has six grams of fat. Potatoes, don't have fat. So I know that one patty has six grams of fat worth of vegetable oil. For that reason, these are definitely on my rarely list. But for the purpose of the video, I had to purchase them. So I might just have to give them a try. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you, Darian, for that one. Let's talk bread. I had multiple people submit bread. Lindsay specifically said gluten-free bread. Let me say, there are a lot of bread options at Trader Joe's. I was actually shocked to see how many bread products they have. Sadly, in a quick scan of a lot of them, I don't think there's a single one that I would have on my often list. 
even really on my sometimes list. Every bread I picked up had some version of canola or vegetable oil. I talked all about bread and gluten in my latest nutrition Q&A, so I'm not gonna dive too deep on that here because you can go watch that in that video. Although I choose to eat gluten-free, I don't think everyone in the world needs to be entirely gluten-free, but I will tell you, basically every bread product I saw on the Trader Joe's shelves is not something I would recommend to consume on a daily or even like consistent basis. I go out of my way to a local bakery to buy gluten-free bread that has ingredients that I actually like. Definitely does not taste as good as this stuff, I'm not gonna lie, but you keep it in the freezer, you toast it, it's still great. Next one was the collagen powder. This is something I've seen Cambria Joy, if you guys don't watch Cambria, she is a gem. I have had a couple people comment and tell me that my channel reminds you of hers and couldn't think of a better compliment. Cambria, you're amazing. I have seen her buy this from Trader Joe's a lot over the years. If you are not new to my channel, you are not surprised. I love collagen. I am a huge believer in collagen for our gut health. It's a great adaptable protein to sneak in a lot of different places in your diet. I drink it in my adrenal cocktail every morning. Now, I personally have a favorite brand of collagen I like to buy from. I will link my discount for them for you guys below. I love supporting them because they are a women-run company. I really like their testing and quality standards that's super important to me. Great Lakes is not a brand that I've done much research on. It doesn't say anything about coming from grass-fed bovine or anything like that. That is something that anytime I'm buying meat, I'm trying to prioritize is grass-fed or pasture-raised. Now I grabbed my receipt because I forgot to pay attention to how much this costs. $10.99 for this is a pretty decent price, let me see. Seven ounces, it's not a ton. Just based off my review of the packaging and some of those things I like to look for in my collagen, I am definitely gonna keep going with my further food, but I will give this an often because collagen is definitely something I recommend on a daily basis. If this is what's convenient for you or what you can afford, for sure, you can totally enjoy this in your daily diet. I had multiple people submit about the plantain chips. Cassandra specifically said jerk style. Before I even show you the ingredients, can we guess? Can we just guess already what I'm going to be giving this? Guys, what do you think is the number two ingredient? That's right sunflower oil. Don't personally love seeing silicon dioxide. Sorry, Cassandra, if this is one of your favorites, you enjoy it. I just wouldn't recommend this to be a daily item. Now, for something that I do love and use myself, huge fan of Chomps. I recently had one of you ask me about my recommendations for protein bars, and if you've been following me for a really long time, like my way pre-YouTube days, you will know I used to live off of protein bars. I very much lived in the world of thinking that protein bars were healthy. I now have a very different perspective of my nutrition and my priority is fueling my body with whole natural foods. Like anyone else, I get that a lot of times we need to eat on the go, we gotta have convenient snacks that don't require a fridge and prep work. For that reason, I love me a chomp. Chomps are made from grass-fed and grass-finished beef, which is so important. We could go into a whole thing about what grass-fed actually means, but being grass-finished is a big deal. Obviously, it is processed with lactic acid in order to keep the meat shelf stable. Overall, really great nourishing ingredients, things that I would consume and cook with myself in my kitchen. Chomps, for sure. These beauties get in often. With the chomps, we're sharing the next item here, dried mango. You guys love it, I do too. It's to die for, it's the best. As I shared in my previous Trader Joe's haul, I tend to not buy this on a regular basis because I could literally eat this whole bag and I wouldn't really advise, but I will say these together make an amazing on-the-go snack. Hiking, road trips, as you know, we avoid naked carbs, so eating these mango slices by themselves is a blood sugar disaster, but pairing them with some protein and fat that comes from the chomp, perfect little pair there. I do believe that fresh fruit is a better choice than dried fruit. I wouldn't recommend like relying on dried fruit every day, but for like a hiking snack, road trip snack kind of vibe, or just for a fun treat, this is great, for sure, for sure. Because I can't help myself though, I don't know when you guys tell me that you love mango slices from Trader Joe's, if you're talking about these. The only ingredient on these ones that say organic dried mango is organic mango. They do have the other kind that says, I think, soft and juicy. Those are doused in extra sugar and preservatives. And honest to goodness, I think that these taste better. Like the other ones are just like way too sweet and sticky. They're just, I don't know, they kind of gross me out. I bought them on accident once 
these are better and you don't need anything more than just the mango all right now this next one i'm excited about because mimi told me she likes to buy her smoked oysters from trader joe's oysters are an incredibly nutrient dense food they have one of the highest concentrations of natural forms of vitamin d zinc and copper unfortunately all three of those are nutrients that are lacking in our soil that because of that we are often supplementing with artificial versions and it's just not the same. So oysters is actually something that's been on my radar for like a year now as a food that I would like to try. I have never eaten an oyster in my life, but I love the concept of consuming these on a daily or weekly basis. Treat it like a supplement. So Mimi, thank you for the heads up that you buy these at Trader Joe's. Again, I've never actually purchased oysters myself, so I haven't done a ton of research yet on how to know what to look for when it comes to good oysters. What I do know from this packaging, it says it's sustainably raised, freshly shucked, smoked over oak, smoked over oak, smoked over oak, smoked over oak. <laughs> Smoked over oak, guys, that's really hard to say. Smoked over oak and packed in Turkish olive oil. If you guys eat oysters and you have a favorite way to eat them, especially like these, <laughs> if you have tips for me to try these, definitely drop those below because I'm gonna have to be adventurous and try these out. I'll let you know what I think. All right, Rachel told me she likes to buy pre-cooked chicken breast, and I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that, I was like, all right, let's go check this out. I'm guessing I'm not gonna want to buy any of these. I will say, looking through the different pre-cooked chicken options on the shelf, I was actually shocked at how few of them had like added preservatives and stuff. All of them except for this one were not organic. I tried to buy pasture-raised and free-range chicken. I want my chickens out in the sunshine, roaming the fields, moving their bodies, eating the grass. Those are chickens that are full of nutrients. Unfortunately, organic doesn't mean that much. Like it's definitely better than super conventional chicken. It's probably, let's see. Yeah, this one says no antibiotics, no added hormones, all vegetarian fed and free range. Oh, it does say free range. Okay, that's cool. I didn't notice that. Vegetarian fed is sneaky because they make you think that that's a good thing, but a lot of times they are feeding them genetically modified grains. Not the best, but like I shared in my last What I Eat in a Day, I have found myself buying a conventional rotisserie chicken from Costco lately because chicken prices are so flipping expensive right now. So with that, do the best you can. Organic, no antibiotics, free range. Definitely better than the alternative that was next to it that didn't say any version of that. But I will say I was pleasantly surprised. I just expected that the pre-cooked chicken was gonna have a bunch of added junk to it and it, it really wasn't that bad. Most of them really weren't that bad. For that reason, I feel like this can get an often. Why not? I mean, I personally prefer to cook my chicken. I feel like pre-cooked chicken just isn't as good, but hey, if that's your jam, go for it. That's it guys, the only other thing I bought was these golden berries. These are to die for. I saw them and couldn't help myself. I will say, you guys submitted like 50 something items. I picked a few of the ones I saw frequently submitted, but if you guys enjoyed this, please do give this video a thumbs up and then comment below if you want me to do more. If you want me to review items from another grocery store, if you want me to review other items from Trader Joe's. Actually, one thing you'll notice, I didn't cover any like dessert treat items. You guys submitted a ton of that. So I was thinking, if you enjoyed this style of video, let me know and maybe we can do a whole dessert video just like all the treats from Trader Joe's, all your favorites. Drop your favorites below and maybe I'll feature your item in the next video. I truly do hope that this was helpful for you and I just wanna remind you, you are not bad for eating certain foods. Do the best that you can with what you've got, nourishing your body, filling it with fuel. It's a gift, it really is a gift and I think when we come from that space of love and honor for our bodies, we can make more empowered choices. But as always, I hope this video helps you do just that. If you want more health and nutrition tips and if you want to encouragement to show up in your wellness with freedom. I have so much of that here on this channel. Please do subscribe, check out these videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.